This is Detective Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain an American action crime thriller film called Man on a Ledge. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. After walking the buzzing streets of New York, ex-cop and fugitive Nick Cassidy arrives at the Roosevelt Hotel. He has a reservation there under the surname Walker, and the bellhop guides him to the lovely room on the 21st floor. Nick has his breakfast there, and though he's barely touched his food, he proceeds to wipe everything that he's touched. He seems to be bracing himself for something, and Nick pensively writes a letter before heading towards the window. Slowly, he steps outside it and onto the ledge. Though the man is clearly nervous, he pushes through until he's walking on the ledge of the Roosevelt Hotel. The sight of him causes a commotion in the busy streets, spurring panic among the crowd while some are immediately dialing 911. A month before all this happened, Nick was an inmate at the Sing Sing Correlational Facility. He got rowdy with his fellow inmates there, and many were trying to attack him until a guard interjected. Nick was later visited by a psychiatrist who informed him that his final appeal was denied. When asked if he's been thinking about killing himself, Nick confirmed that he was thinking about it every day. His police friend, Mike Ackerman, visited him to let him know that his brother called about their dying father. And just that night, a jail guard would inform Nick that his father had died. He attended his father's funeral with cops guarding him, and Nick was with his friend Mike, his brother Joey, and Joey's girlfriend Angie. When Mike left the family, Nick questioned his brother if that was the best burial ground he could get their father, and Joey angrily retorted that Nick killed their dad the moment he went to prison. The brothers fought, and with the cops intervening, Nick quickly grabbed a gun before holding everyone there at gunpoint. He then pointed the gun at Joey, instructing him to uncuff him, and after apologizing to his former colleagues, Nick escaped. A car chase ensured with Nick evading the cops, and soon, he managed to lose them by driving off to a speeding train. It separated him from his pursuers, but it also caught the back of his car. The police checked the wreckage, but was unable to find him. Meanwhile, Joey informed Mike that the cops now have a reason to kill his escaped fugitive of a big brother. That night, Nick escaped to a secret bunker. He got some cash there and browsed some files and identification cards. When morning came, Nick was staring at a family photo of him, his father, and Joey before carrying out his plan. Back to the present, the authorities are being informed that there's a man on a ledge at the Roosevelt hotel. They barricade the streets with cops and firemen responding to the scene. Police officer Jack Daughtry arrives, and as he's holding Nick on the top side of the building, he jokes with his fellow cops that it'll be a mess if he jumped. Jack comes to Nick's room and tries to calm him down while his superior officer, Detective Dante Marcus, instructs his men to clear the area below. He checks with Jack regarding any demands that Nick may have, and Nick tells Jack that he wants a woman to talk to before giving him a name. Jack then reports to Dante that the situation is dire. Nick's already eaten his last meal and he already left a note. To Jack's dismay, Dante orders him to call over the woman he requested. With that, police officer Lydia Mercer is summoned to the hotel as the negotiating officer, and Lydia meets with Nick. There, Nick reminds her of the time she failed to save a cop who had killed himself on Brooklyn Bridge. She tries convincing him to talk with her inside his room, but the man confesses that he is ready to die. Jack sarcastically applauds Lydia, so she retorts to their fellow officers that she's in charge, so they should leave the scene to her. Jack then gives her five minutes with Nick. Meanwhile, Mike is still looking everywhere for his friend. In the same building, a rich businessman named David Englander is blissfully unaware of everything that's transpiring. Instead, he's currently upset over some problems his financial investment is running into. Upon learning that Nick didn't leave any fingerprints in the hotel, Lydia grows suspicious of him. Still, she continues with their negotiations and even offers him a smoke. But unbeknownst to the officers, Nick has an earpiece that he's using to communicate with Joey and Angie. The two are completely unnoticed as they walk through the crowd, allowing them to set their plan against David Englander's jewelry shop in motion. With Nick reminding Joey through his earpiece that they're running out of time, he and his girlfriend quickly climb to the top of the jewelry shop building. Upon seeing them, Nick braces himself before pretending that he's going to jump, spurring a commotion on the street below. The people share a collective scream, drowning out the noise from Joey blowing up a hole in the building from the other side. As Joey and Angie rush inside the adjacent building, Nick finally accepts Lydia's offer to smoke. It almost appears that she had won his trust, but when a news broadcast helicopter appears from out of nowhere, Nick almost loses his grip on the building, making him furious. Mike catches sight 
sight of the news, and he's in for the surprise of his life when he sees his friend there. Later on, he finally finds the place Nick stayed at to plan for his big day. Joey and Angie struggle with infiltrating David's building, but soon enough, they finally deceive the security cameras inside. To keep them from being discovered, Nick continues with his distracting balancing act, but Lydia finally gets a print of him from the cigarette she offered. They now have the key to identifying Nick's true identity, but one roadblock is replaced by another. As Joey and Angie encounter a new problem in the building, they try to inform Nick about it, but Lydia's currently speaking to him. This forces Nick to underhandedly guide Joey into bypassing the heat sensor by speaking to both him and Lydia in double entendres. After a bit, Nick goes on to reveal that he knows Lydia was able to take his prints and that she will later know who he really is. Joey uses a fire extinguisher to cool the heat sensor in Englander's building, while Dante uncovers the truth behind their jumper's identity. He quickly tells Lydia, who is aware of Nick's previous felony. Jack then announces that Nick was convicted of stealing a 40 million monarch diamond owned by David Englander, and said David Englander is currently in the building he bought with his jewelry shop right across the street. In Nick's hidden bunker, Mike burns some important documents there before going to see him in New York. David celebrates the new building he bought with his investors while Angie and Joey continue to make their way towards the prized vault. David, however, finally receives news regarding the jumper's name. Lydia confronts Nick and asks about his motives, but he reveals to her that he's innocent and that David set him up. He also hints to Joey and Angie that the cops have found out about him and are on their way back to check David's jewelry store. Nick proceeds to protest his innocence, and with the commotion he's causing, the police are having trouble passing through the crowded street. This buys Joey and Angie time to hide their tracks from the cops and conceal themselves through the building's air vents. As David's men check the vault, Joey and Angie discover the passcodes from them. Though his vault is fine, David is still furious and he takes it out on Dante, even threatening his position as a cop before commanding him to clean up the mess. Dante accompanies the tactical team, and after receiving information that Nick has a bomb planted somewhere in the building, they're more than ready to take him out. Lydia convinces him to give her a little more time, and Jack actually supports this. Meanwhile, Mike rushes to New York in his police car. The news team is broadcasting the entire situation as it unfolds, and the reporter explains that Nick had robbed David Englander two years ago. He stole the man's monarch diamond, and he allegedly cut it into untraceable pieces which have now been sold. Lydia informs Nick that the tactical team is on standby, so Nick tries to convince her that he's innocent by explaining his side of the story. During a moonlighting gig where he was supposed to escort David, he was framed for stealing the monarch diamond. Nick also notes that there were two other men at the scene. David was about to go bankrupt at the time, so he hid the diamond and framed him for the robbery. Lydia argues that David would have just sold the jewel, but Nick counters that the man is prideful and used the diamond's insurance to gain his wealth back. Despite Lydia's disbelief, Nick begs her to help him, so she buys him a bit more time while she investigates what he just said. Mike arrives at the scene and talks to Dante, nervous about what Nick's been telling Lydia during their negotiations. However, their exchange is interrupted by the arrival of some documents, and Mike offers to take them to the building. Lydia tells Dante about Nick's account, but he dismisses it and tells the tactical team to prepare themselves. In the meantime, Mike browses the file inside the hotel restroom and takes a piece of the document by hiding it in his sleeves. He then goes to Nick's room, only to get questioned by Lydia and Jack, who are both suspicious of his presence. Later, the bellhop enters the room and hands Nick food, and the crowd below cheers while Angie reaches Englander's vault. He guides her in disabling the vault's alarm, but on the other side of the building, Mike successfully hands the bomb blueprints to the negotiating team. Finally, Joey and Angie successfully open the vault, but to their dismay, the monarch diamond is nowhere to be found. They sadly report this to Nick, prompting him to tell Lydia all about his plans while telling Joey to go on with their next one. The couple triggers the alarm in David's shop, which makes him panic and check his diamond in a separately secured vault. With the ongoing commotion, Lydia comes out of the room with a call from Internal Affairs while Mike takes the opportunity to talk to his friend. He locks the door, keeping Jack and Lydia out. But Nick doesn't trust him anymore, especially since he knows that Mike is involved with the conspiracy. They then get interrupted when the tactical team gets deployed. Nick runs and maneuvers from the building's ledge to another. He bolts inside the hotel while the tactical team is hot on his heels. Nick takes his diamond and hides it in his sleeve, but when he returns to his office, Joey and Angie are already waiting for him there. They hold him at gunpoint and cuff him to his vault, before taking the diamond and fleeting. After keeping the diamond in a bag, Joey leaves it to the bellhop serving Nick. David calls Dante, instructing him to capture Joey and Angie in the building. Through Lydia's call with internal affairs, she learns that the man Nick had ticked off was a corrupt policeman named Walker, who died under mysterious circumstances. He did, however, have two accomplices, and their names are Mike Ackerman and Dante Marcus. The
the tactical team continues their pursuit against Nick with false information from Dante that he has a bomb trigger. Nick runs through the hotel kitchen where he bumps with the bellhop who hands him the diamond. But things get complicated as Angie and Joey get captured by Dante. With Nick continuing his escape, he ends up on the ledge again while the buzzing people on the streets of New York continue cheering for him. He ends up cornered on the rooftop with Lydia and the tactical team, but Dante takes over and he gets Lydia out of the way. He then calls David, who has a beaten up Joey in his clutches. He threatens to kill Joey if he doesn't return his diamond, forcing Nick to comply. He begrudgingly hands the monarch diamond over to David, and the man relishes in his victory by insulting Nick, saying that he lost again. Dante threatens Nick to jump, else he'll push his little brother off the building first. Fortunately, Mike arrives and shoots Dante in the chest, but since the man is wearing a bulletproof vest, he quickly fires back at him, leaving Mike wounded. Nick and Joey rush over to a dying Mike. He confesses his involvement and that he was too consumed by his fear of being put in jail to do anything. Dante follows the brothers to kill them both, but Lydia shoots him in the neck, killing him. Amidst the turbulent situation, Joey informs Nick that David is getting away, so he finally makes him jump from the top of the building before ending up on a large cushion. The crowd goes rowdy and cheers Nick as he confronts David. Nick takes the diamond from his pocket and triumphantly shows it to the world, proclaiming his innocence while the cops are surrounding him. Later, Jack and Lydia fetch Nick from prison, and Jack leaves them alone to chat. She asks how he knew about the diamond, so Nick takes her somewhere to reveal his secret. They arrive at a bar, where the people are cheering for Nick's success. There, Nick introduces his father, Frank Cassidy who was none other than the very helpful bellhop at the Roosevelt Hotel. Frank and his sons embrace each other, and later on, Joey silences the crowd so he can propose to Angie with the ring he stole from David's jewelry store. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.